In a previous video, we talked about how phishing attack unrolls step by step from the initial um, access through either email or text message or phone call into either URL attachment and then potentially either into malware, exploit or phishing website. We also covered how different techniques like a type of squatting or abusing subdomain or URL path uh, used by attacker to try to imitate a benign URL inside the phishing or benign domain inside the phishing URL. Today we're going to talk about more advanced techniques which would most likely used in a target attack to actually completely hide a phishing URL and make it look like a legitimate one, an exact copy of legitimate URL, to fool a victim to believe that the victim is visiting a legitimate website. Sometimes, especially in a, in a target attack, in a spear phishing, an attacker cannot afford to play by chance, so they want the URL to look exactly like a benign website. There is a couple of techniques published by the security researcher with the, with the pseudonym Mr. Docs about how potentially an attacker can leverage multiple techniques to completely hide a phishing URL and make it look like a an exact benign URL. The first method we're going to talk about is browser in the browser. The idea of this method is so that we very often find ourselves in a situation when the website, whatever it is, asking us to log in using different credentials like Apple, Facebook, Google, and so on. It's very typical nowadays to, to at any website, instead of creating a new login and new password, people would opt in into, into just reusing the, the trusted credentials. And that's what attacker might abuse during the target attack. While you're visiting, the phishing website might look like a regular legitimate website, but might ask you to actually log in and authenticate using one of the methods like Google, Microsoft, or Apple. When you click on that sign in message, what phishing website would do, it would generate a browser window inside the browser window. In this case, those like the actual browser, right? And inside window fully generated by uh, JavaScript. So, and it makes an impression of the actual Microsoft login window with the correct URL and the browser can be moved around and you can of course put your credentials in you can click on the buttons and so on, which makes you believe that it's actual legitimate, in this case, Microsoft window, uh, because it has all the legitimate signs. And the only way to spot that this window is generated by um, the phishing website is to try to move it beyond the borders of the of the original browser. But if you don't do that, and who is doing it nowadays? Because most of the time you have a browser open full screen, so you would not really try to move around pop-up window, you just enter the credentials. This is quite effective technique to hide the actual malicious URL and make you believe that you visiting legitimate website which asks you for credential. While browser in the browser is very impressive and creative technique to hide a URL of the phishing pop-up message because the whole pop-up message is just a drawing inside the browser to be properly and, and successfully executed against the victim uh, the victim needs to trust a website which creates that pop-up um, which means that you still have the biggest weakness of that technique is that the, the victim still need to trust somehow an original URL, which then delivers some sort of legitimately looking website, which consists a button to generate a pop-up for some sort of credentials to steal. It might be used by uh, a spear phishing effectively when some sort of trust already generated between the victim and attacker and that the website which generates the pop-up by some reason is interesting for the victim and victim is willing to trust. In this case, that sort of attack can be quite successful. There is another technique proposed by the same author with the same purpose to hide a phishing URL. And I believe that technique, which called by the author phishing with the Chromium's application mod, 
It has much bigger potential for mass phishing and can be abused by the real attackers in the future phishing campaigns. So let's let's discuss that one in more details. What Mr. Docs noticed is that you can run Chromium-based browsers, specifically Chrome and Microsoft Edge, with a parameter that it opens a browser page like an application. What interesting about that? it doesn't contain any URL here. You see, there is no URL. So if you open a URL in that application mode, you would not see what URL you're visiting. And of course, that's an amazing vulnerability for the attacker to exploit. Because of course, as an attacker, you can run the Chrome in application mode and just create a fake address bar using a JavaScript. In this case, a victim would truly believe that the victim opened the legitimate website. So the question is, okay, how would we deliver, how would we make a victim to open a Chrome with our phishing URL in this uh, specific app mode? And the answer is pretty simple, actually. Remember in the first video we discussed that the phishing attack can be delivered as attachment, not necessarily as a URL. This attachment easily can be the link file which opens a browser in application mode with a fake URL bar. And this is very typical for attack to start with a link file. It can also be a JavaScript file. It can be some sort of HTML with JavaScript or any other script language attached to the to the email which would actually assume that you have Microsoft Edge or Chrome and open the URL when you click on this JavaScript or VBS script it will open the browser with a phishing website and a fake URL drawn by the by the JavaScript and I believe that this attack is is much more practical and much more dangerous for in the while used than even browser in the browser attack. While browser in the browser attack looks very sophisticated and kind of very cool, like, wow, we have a browser drone in the browser. This time of attack, because it's so easy to create a shortcut or JavaScript file and use it as an attachment for the email, it actually can be used in the in the wild mass phishing campaigns. And of course, of course, for example, Google or different type of phishing or spam filtering systems would try to detect suspicious attachments like VBS or JavaScript and block them right away. That, however, doesn't guarantee that in the wild attackers would not find a way to find that LNK file shortcut or JavaScript or VBS somewhere inside ISO or inside 7-zip archive or even a phishing a document with uh, which would actually contain the macro which would drop the LNK or which would just simply directly run Chrome browser which is quite legitimate behavior for let's say Excel files or even Microsoft Office files it's quite common to have in the benign documents to have a URL inside and when user clicks on that URL, the URL opens the, the browser. And in this case, the browser will be open in application mode with a fake URL, which would make a, a victim believe that it's a legitimate login URL. So this attack, though it might look on paper less sophisticated, actually to me has a much bigger potential uh, for in the wild abuse for the mass phishing campaigns.